don't do that. Hakkinen is out. That was a good comeback. I'm first, everybody. Oh no. Oh no. Welcome to the dawn of the F1 career of uh, Friedrich Bang. Today we'll travel all the way to the year 1990, where uh, Friedrich is about to make his debut in Formula 1. And uh, this is going to be a season of maximum pain. Today we'll kick off the 1990 season at Phoenix, but let's do a little introduction for the season first. What we know of uh, Friedrich's career prior 1990 is that in 1985 he drove in the British F3 series. Then came few years we don't yet know what he did, but in 1989 he somehow struck a deal for Indianapolis 500 uh, that didn't go all that well. No! However, here we are, a stroke of luck for the 1990 season. Bang has managed to close a deal in F1 with a very very promising project. A team purchased and funded by an actual car manufacturer with a manufacturer engine. Certainly this would be a road to instant success. And no. Friedrich doesn't know it yet, but it's gonna be bad. Sadly the team he made a deal with is... Colony owned by Subaru. Why would I choose Colony for this season? Well, first of all, in real life I drive a Subaru. Also, the Colony Subaru is such an exotic combination. Also, like for most rookies, Friedrich's F1 career has to have a humble beginning and it doesn't get much more humble than this. So, I'm afraid I had no choice really. When we talk about bad F1 teams in the early 90s, everyone always brings up the LIFE team. However, in the season opener in Phoenix, LIFE actually beat Colony in pre-qualifying. In pre-qualifying, Gary Brabham of LIFE was only 35 seconds off the pace, whereas Bertrand Cachot of Colony was more than 3 minutes slower than the LIFE car. It's no wonder, because the Colony C3 with its Subaru engine was assembled for the very first time in the pits at Phoenix. The only test session was a shakedown in the parking area of a supermarket. Subaru had supplied a brand new flat 12 engine designed by Carlo Chiti. The engine was only producing 500 brake horsepower, that's only 30 more than the infamous W12 engine of life. Naturally, the car was also overweight, because why wouldn't it? The car was very inconsistent, unreliable and obviously incompetitive. With the Subaru engine, it never cleared the pre-qualifying. At its best, it only missed pre-qualifying by 1.3 seconds. At the halfway point of the season, Subaru gave up. They sold the team back to Enzo Coloni, left and took their horrible engines with them. Colony switched to Ford Cosworth V8 engines and also managed to improve the car, after which they started clearing the pre qualifyings However, the qualifying itself was still too much and the car never qualified for a single Grand Prix in 1990. In our alternative universe, the car is ever so slightly more competitive, because Bang has brought three major sponsors with him. They are Chan B, Hatcher and Minardi Simsport. Yes, all my three channel members have sponsor stickers in Bang's car. If you want two, info in the description. The car is still going to be incredibly bad and just clearing the pre-qualifying would be a victory for us. Everything that becomes after that is a bonus. And in case you're wondering, these are the settings for GP2 Edit. Uh, power, 500 brake horsepower, so very very poor engine. Uh, car failure probability, the maximum, obviously, and car settings, these are the AI grip levels. Grip factor 523, with uh, this number, the bigger it is, the worse the grip is, and apparently it also makes the car more unstable. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. 
obviously overweight the car is uh, 616 kilograms heavy whereas the computer cars are 520 kilos so yeah it, sh it should be pretty bad so let's kick off the season of pain and these are the teams participating in the, the pre-qualifying Ozella, Coloni with Friedrich Bang as an only driver Eurobrun, Monteverdi, Life and AGS so yeah these cars are basically placeholders because in GP2 you can only disable two drivers from the grid so uh, these are just blank cars and on the road they are basically almost invisible they have no bitmaps so they are basically moving chicanes and here we are at the pits in, in Phoenix and getting ready to pre-qualify and as I said we need to finish uh, in the top four in order to pre-qualify for the qualifying session and I'm going into this kind of blind I really don't know what's going to happen uh, I drove a few laps just to te test the, the performance but that w those laps I made in Interlagos so I have no idea how the car performs here uh, also no no setting up the car or anything we're kind of going into it completely blind like they did in real life uh, because they they only did uh, for a test session a brief shakedown the, at the parking lot of a supermarket so it's it's going to be pretty interesting let's check out the car setup yeah I think we're gonna need some more straight line speed because there are a couple of long straights here uh, the gear ratios are, are certainly going to be off because of our very poor engine oops uh, let's uh, I think yeah right height maybe we can lower it lower it down a little bit but yeah that's enough setting up this team we, we, we can't afford to set up the car because we don't have money let's go <laughs> The first qualifying, well, pre-qualifying session for Friedrich Bang in his Colony Subaru. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, this uh, track, this is the 1991 version of, of the Phoenix Street Course. It's not the layout they drove in 1990. It's, it's slightly different. There is a version of the track available for GP2 with the 1990 layout, but I decided to go with this because this is uh, this is made by Michael82, a very very beautiful, very detailed, detailed and, and very accurate version of the track. So I decided to go with this. Also, I know this track pretty well because it's obviously the same layout than in Formula 1 Grand Prix. Should be interesting. Uh, the car actually it doesn't feel that bad. It's just like it doesn't have a lot of grip. But we'll so soon find out, find out what our pace is going to be, so... The first flying lap for Friedrich Bang. This is the beginning of Bang's Formula 1 career. Here we go. Let's concentrate. Oh, very, very poor straight line speed. And immediately he screws up. There was no... Basically, a very, very poor grip under braking as well, and a horrible understeer. Yeah, immediately when I tried to like drive fast, the reali reality kicks in. This car is honestly, it is pretty damn bad. But yeah, this this lap this is definitely a ride off. Uh, maybe I should 
changed the brake bias a little bit towards the rear. But yeah, through, through the fast turns, it's, it's very scary to drive. Apparently, if you change the grip levels in, in Grand Prix to edit, it makes the car more unstable. There is a separate program where you can edit the grip it, it doesn't uh, affect the balance of the car but I think it's only realistic that maybe these these little teams don't have that balanced cars to begin with but here we go another try First sector was very good. The thing is, sorry, I'm concentrating. Nailed it. The thing is, after this track, we're going to Interlagos and that will be bad because Interlagos is very much a power circuit and we really don't have any power so that might be bad okay just don't spin I think it's been a clean lap 35, 36, 37, and we are 8th. Oh man, we're not even close, boys. I think you probably need something like 136. Let, let's just jump into the pits and see where we're at. 139, that's pretty bad. Well, we are faster, I think, than the... the um, life cars but <laughs> oh man the season of pain indeed we need to figure out something um let's uh put the brake bias a little bit towards the rear so that we don't block the front wheels that easily a little bit less wing for for more straight line speed i didn't actually notice if the car was bottoming out so let's Lower the right height as well. Uh, how were the gear ratios? That's something I, I didn't really take note of. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see about the standings. JJ left currently fourth, and uh, he's done one thirty-four. So we would need like five seconds faster time. Oh, <laughs> oh dear, this might be bad. Let's go, let's let's try to improve. All right, here we go, ready to go. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can find five seconds. The, cars, the car feels a little bit faster after my, uh, my uh, setup tweaks, but it's still... ...pretty damn slow. Uh, 
That was a pretty damn good first sector. Seven tenths ahead. Broke too late, but we'll just say it was late apexing. Oh, very, very scary turn. That's where I retired in Grand Prix 1 when we did our race. Don't spin. Oh, come on. <laughs> we, we we improved more than second, but we're still four seconds off the pace. I think I already screwed up this lap. Oh, now I now I permanently screwed it up. Yeah. Oh man, this is this is pretty damn tough. Can we find something with the setup? More front wing. This will make the car more pointier and more grippy, but it also makes the car a lot more um, unstable. Lower the gears a little bit. Maybe right heights. I don't know. Maybe if we'll, we'll use packers. I, the thing is, we, we ra we'll run out of laps. We don't have enough time to t like test all the uh, setups. Because we could reduce the right height and, and uh, limit the susp suspension travel with packers. But we don't have time to find the sweet spot. This is how it is. When you're driving a colony. Okay, how, how much do we actually need? We're eighth. We are four seconds off the pace. Uh, only the life cars are behind us. You, you know, I promised that this was going to be a season of pain. I am now delivering. Hope you, hope you guys are still like excited. I'll see you in the flying lap. Alright, the next flying lap. We only have five laps to go, so it does not look very good. Oh, that was a horrible mistake and that ate all our straight line speed. Car is faster now. Well, actually, I'm behind. Damn it! It feels faster, but it's way more difficult to drive. Oh, too much struggle! Ah, another spin. Okay, a lap ruins. Let's try this again. We are running out of laps though. Alright, here we go. No! <laughs> I think I ruined the ruined my tires. We'll go into the pits. Alright, so we we have one flying lap. One flying lap left. And we need to improve by five seconds. 
if we want to pre-qualify. And I should have set up, like, adjust the gear ratios because the, they are still too long. And I forgot. Yeah, it's bad. I'll see you at the beginning of the lap. Alright, here we go, final try. We're probably not going to be able to make it, but at least we can try to get the perfect lap here. Lap here. Good first sector. Well, that was a late apex. Come on, go, go, go. Oh dear, there's a moving chicane in front. Oh, I, I went straight. Messed up in the last turn. But that was our, our qualifying, boys. That was our qualifying. 137.8. And if we look at the results, uh, th this is the top four that gets uh, true from the pre-qualifying, JJ Leto, the last one to pre-qualify and uh, Friedrich Bang number 8 in his first uh, pre-qualifying session three sec uh, 4 seconds of the pace so yeah, we need to find 4 seconds the thing is, the next track uh, in Interlagos will be even more difficult because it's a power track and we don't have any power but yeah We'll see, maybe maybe we can get some more sponsors and improve the car a little bit. But yeah, uh, let's check out what happens in the race. And here we are at the final lap of the race where Arton Senna is leading, leading, leading the race. It is uh, Nigel Mansell, currently second with his Ferrari. Nelson Piquet third with his Benetton and Berger fourth. Ricardo Patrese fifth and uh, Alessandro Nannini sixth. So there we are. And uh, Senna is probably going to win the opening round. Here he comes, the last turns. It's too bad that we didn't see Friedrich Bang in the race today and not even in the qualifying, but well, hopefully we will have some better luck next time. Martin Senna wins the opening round and we'll check out the points. And here are the final results of the 1990 US Grand Prix. Senna wins, Mansell, Piquet, Berger, Patrese, Nannini with points. Uh, Thierry Boatson, very poor race for him with his Williams. Uh, Gian Alesi famously with his Turrell, uh, eighth, not quite in, in points. But yeah, uh, 15 finishers, quite a lot of attrition in the race. But yeah, this was the season of pain, the first race. When I did my intro or the teaser for this season, everyone was very excited. Uh, and now, hopefully you're still excited, because we didn't even get the race. I will see you the next race, or pre-qualifying, or whatever. Thanks for watching, bye bye.